you give me the short check? I think there's a couple over here. You want to switch one out, Debbie? These are definitely taller. Oh, I got it. You Thank got you. it? All right. All right, I'd like to call to order the uh, Rose Township regular meeting, February 14th, 2018, at 7 p.m., 9080 Mason Street. Um, would you please rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance with me? I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. all. Okay. The roll call, please. Mr. Scheib Snyder? <coughs> here. Ms. Miller? Here. Mr. Gamka? Here. Ms. Blaska? Here. Mr. Noble? Yes. Okay. Oh, that's good. Uh, could we have a motion for the approval of the agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Paul, second. Okay. Mr. Gamka? Yes. Ms. Miller, yes. Mr. Noble? Yes. Ms. Blaska? Yes. Ms. Schneider. Yes. Uh, approval of <coughs> the consent agenda. <coughs> Can I have a motion for that? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll support it. I have several comments. Okay. okay. Uh, regarding the treasurer's report, uh, at the last uh, board meeting, there's $937,000 plus dollars in the Oakland County investment pool. The last meeting, the auditor questioned the, that amount of money sitting in a non-rated fund. And so the, uh, the treasurer is supposed to look at removing that money and putting it into a uh, fund that is a, has a rating for it. Well, I did it today. We're okay. initiating the... the we're moving the money out of the uh, Oakland County and the Michigan um, State Money Market Fund, and I'm going to go next Wednesday. I have an appointment, and we're going to um, I'm going to take the money, a million dollars, and I plan on buying a um, two-year Treasury note, which I can get 2.1 percent on, and which we're presently in the Money Market Funds. So I think I'm getting 1.3, so we'll pick up almost one percent which is $10,000, and you can't get, and if the U.S. government goes under, we are all in trouble, so I think that's pretty secure. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Schreiber. I have one other item about the uh, fire authority. Fire, <coughs> fire authority is doing a good job. I requested that they submit a uh, listing of monthly of the uh, building fires that they go to, if they occur, where they're at, et cetera. So we have, a, we have an idea of what uh, is going on in the township. Uh, they've submitted that, and I want to thank them for submitting that in a timely manner. That's all I have. Okay, so uh, I would like to add the closed meeting minutes of uh, January 10th. Closed meeting minutes. So I have a motion from Teresa to approve, and a second from Paul. Do you agree with the... Yes, as a Additions? Yeah. Okay, can I have a roll call, please? Ms. Blaska? Yes. Mr. Noble? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Mr. Gamka? Yes. Ms. Scheibsnyder? Yes. All right, and this is time for, um, we don't have a presentation, so I did, was going to have Craig Strong here today, but he had an emergency and is not able to attend. Um, so brief public comments for um, items on the agenda. Does anybody have anything to say? Bye. Oh, it's up to you. You okay. were pretty. Yeah, if you want to go up to the podium. Give your name and address. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. I'm Kathleen Bear, wife of Emil Bear, the constable for Rose Township. To the Rose Township board. On Thursday, January 18th, Supervisor Diane Scheib Snyder sent me a letter of resignation that she wanted my husband, Emil Baer, to sign. In this letter, she said it needed his approval and signature. I went to Clarkston Specialty Care, and Emil and I discussed the matter. 
we decided to wait regarding this plan and continue on sick leave, waiting to see if he can get better. I responded to Diane's letter January 20th, which was two days later, clearly stating that he was making wonderful improvement and would like to wait on the retirement document. Imagine my shock to find that someone from this office took the retirement letter to the nursing home and had my husband sign it without my knowledge. We expect to have a package when he does retire of 575 plus dental and vision upon his retirement. But we're not ready to commit to that at this time. This sounds like collusion and our lawyer is looking into the matter. How dare you? And Rose Township residents, please note, after my husband retires, you may never have a council that you can vote in again. The amount of money the township saves by hiring an ordinance officer will not be a savings for the Rose Township, as they have proposed. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, go ahead. I have to agree with Mrs. Bear. I can't imagine that anyone would go, especially an ill man in the hospital under medication. This is absolutely ridiculous that you would even think you could do that. Yeah, people that down, I can oh, I'm sorry. I said it's absolutely ridiculous that the board would even think they could do that. A man's sick in a hospital. They're trying to straighten out his medication. He's clearly, he shouldn't be signing anything. And I think you've just put the township in danger of a real good lawsuit. on this team agenda, but you're not going to listen to half of them anyways. You're going to do what you want to, but there's a one board member sitting on that board up there that wouldn't be standing right here today along with Bear's wife pitching. How can you do it? You wouldn't, you wouldn't sign it, take that paper over there and sign it. No damn way. You should take this thing and put it in a trash can, just like anything else. Quote, all the person has to do is say yes. But I've been in this township too long, and I know how some of your board members run. And you know I know what you are. Just like the cemetery thing. That should have been done five years ago. And this waste, as it is waste, we already got one sitting over there in Demodra. Do we need another one? You board members need to think this can happen to you tomorrow, but you're trying a meal beer. And who's going to take his place? You're going to replace another one with an elected official? Or are you going to do the same thing like you did? with the cemetery when I step down, give it to an employee in this township that is in a resident. Think about it, board members. And as people sitting out here, you should be thinking about it in the rest of the township. I'm very nervous about talking in front of people, so. Thank you, Renee. I'm Denise Hanley. I'm the deputy treasurer. As far as Emil Bear, um, I, I'm sorry. I go up and he asked me to bring the letter. He called me, wanted me to bring the letter. He called me on a Friday. I didn't come up to a Monday. I didn't ask him about it. He asked me for it. He wanted to sign it. He asked me what I thought about it. I told him it wasn't my opinion of what I thought. If you want to sign it, you sign it. He asked me. He also asked me on November 16th to write a resign letter for him. He's been wanting to resign for the last six to eight months. He has told most of us in this office here. So he was the one. So, and, I, you know, and I made sure, yes, he was on medication, but he was with it that day. He's been with it most of the day. One time I went up there, he was not with it by all means. He's with it like 80% of the time. 
I asked him who the president was. I asked him what year it was. He knew. He knew it was going to go to Diane. He knew the address. He knew everything. He wanted to sign it. I didn't care one way or another. He called me. He asked me to bring it, so I brought it to him. That's how it happened. I'm sorry. I, I, don't, I don't want people being blamed for something that didn't, they didn't do. He was the one who initiated it, and he's been wanting to retire for a long time. All the time he has been asking me. He called me, he's called me at home wanting. He called me on Thanksgiving weekend because he was upset, and this is from what he's telling me, that Ms. Miller had called Catherine about him not wanting him to retire. He was upset about it. And I said, you know, you and Catherine have to talk it out. And he goes, Catherine's okay with me retiring. That's what he told me. This was at Thanksgiving weekend I got a call. I don't know, it wasn't trying to cause a problem, but that's how it happened. He called the office, he even asked for Diane. I mean, it wasn't even initiated by anybody here. It was him. So I just wanted to clear that up. So I got to clear up also that I didn't even know until it was all passed out to all the board members that this letter had been signed by him. And I, and I did ask him, if, I mean, he called me, are you on board? And he said, yes. Now, I, you know, I, isn't that nice? But are you, you go to a nursing home and ask a patient if, if they're no, on no, board. No, 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 no. It's like going me. somewhere and asking okay. somebody, <coughs> That's enough. please give me, uh, would you please make me the heir of, of, of your fortune while you're in the nursing home? <coughs> Come on. Who typed Who's the letter? Who typed the letter? I did. And who took it out there? I Diane typed the letter, and yeah, Denise took it I out there. I typed the letter. I had I spoke with the well, attorney well, every well, step well, of the well, way well, as far as what I was doing and if there were any issues. But you're not his wife. Our phone number. Come on. Well, he called yesterday. I mean, he calls me. I mean, there are certain phone numbers he has memorized. My okay. sister gets called five times a day. Yeah, he doesn't remember our phone. Okay, let's go back. Is there any other public comments? How many times you call your own number? That's why you remember. Doesn't HR have to handle this before it's sent to uh, to the supervisor? Isn't that how you go through? No, not according to the statute. The storage really? statute has to be written given to the written to the entire board, which it was. And uh, the original copy has to be presented to the clerk, which it was. Like I said, I I I, I, I didn't I even know about this. I spoke with the um, attorney all the way um, every step of the way through this. Um, okay, back to our agenda. But, but you, in here, said you did not, you were not ready for him to retire. You had discussed it as we a husband and wife. And I sent an email to you. I, I, I agree, I, and, and he was aware of that, it's too. right here. And it, it was I within a couple of weeks, he, he, he called and changed him, his mind. I've gone to him the day after you sent me, the two days after you sent me the letter, mm -hmm. I go back to you. Mm -hmm. That I had talked with him, and I said, let's stay out on sick leave until we, and he was making such fantastic progress. Mm -hmm. And then he called and requested the letter. Oh, bull. That's. I'm his wife, how can you? <clears throat> Um, unfinished business, there's cell tower, um, Mr. Noble has submitted some language that he would like changed as well as I passed out to the board um, what the attorney would like as well, and it's quite lengthy. Um, why don't we let the attorney have both of these um, and redraft they yeah, did yeah, send a Word yeah. document, so we'll redraft it and go from there. Yeah, I just I just found this uh, agreement totally unacceptable. It's typical written by a foreign corporation to the state of Michigan. Uh, it's from out of state, uh, and it's had a lot of one-sided one -sided issues in the township. Uh, one classic example is that if, if, if they find that they, they have built outside the limits of their description of their property, then, and then they, they can acquire that with, with, without no payment. Uh, also, there's no protection for the township for, uh, for their actions. They want us to indemnify and save them from many and all claims, et cetera. There's nothing about 
them defending, defending and implying on us. Um, they prepared a draft resolution and a consent affidavit. I would never sign. We're going to do anything. We're going to use our standard standard township procedures. So uh, yes, uh, Diane is uh, going to turn it over to the attorneys. But uh, let's make sure that uh, these items occur. Well, I'll also I'd like to suggest that, uh, as I mentioned to you, that that what this consists of is it's a rose it's a rose civic park that's a, that's a parent par parent parcel. And, and years ago, the township gave them an easement to access a defined area within the within the Rose Center Park to build this tower. Uh, there's a good possibility that they, thought, they only set aside 2,500 square feet. There's a good possibility that while they, the previous people, constructed physical plant beyond the 2,500 square feet, and this document says that. If it's found that way, they can take it. Well, we aren't playing that way. So I, I, w I would like to con have you consider uh, having a survey, if we could, set aside money to have a survey to survey the easement and the property. Because we're be beginning to find that a lot of uh, land that is owned by the township is being encroached on by others. So that's just another expense, unfortunately, we should have. So. But thank you for uh, hearing that, and let's proceed and get this done. Thank you. Okay. I, oh, my comment. I have a comment, Diane. It says agreement is for 40 years. I, I kind of remember, I would like to double check that. I, it seems to me that we voted on for only 20 years. I was going to question the same because right. I thought we had decided for 20 years. The agreement says that they have eight. They have they have <laughs> they have an additional eight site eight five year cycles to renew. So you can read that. That's that's the choice between the two parties. Yeah. Or it's 40 years. Well, I would read it that both parties. It, it has eight eight five year cycles to review from signing of the agreement. Mm -hmm. So that's 40 years. I can't imagine both one party. I'd Rose Thompson saying, "No, we don't want to renew it because they can't, they're 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 going to like the money." Mm -hmm. So, but that's what that's what the agreement says. For example, I guess, I guess this document's page, not page numbered or anything, but uh, uh, a little hard to find, but uh, let me see. I, I had it circled here. <coughs> oh, interesting, though, it does go up. The, the rental rate goes up at 3% per no, year. $69,732.38, and I was reading through here, and if, am I reading this right? $3,500 for 12 months is $42,000. Why is it $27,732.38 less? Am I reading it wrong? But isn't that, that's not, what about the per tower? Or the per um, carrier. That's what I'm. That yes. was the additional. That's where it's coming from. Because we were receiving sixty nine thousand seven hundred thirty two dollars and thirty eight cents. Well, I think one reason they, they uh, the previous lease the previous lease considered uh, so many dollars for each antenna that was on the tower. Right. That's what we're talking about. But, each but, tenant, but I think there. we counted the antenna. I think we counted the antennas, and there was less t less antennas on the tower than previously. I thought we were five. So that's we why we were right to thirty five hundred. I don't I don't know we could you could you could tabulate that. Well I just didn't understand the, the three thousand five hundred dollars per month, the rent. Well, that's what they're offering, so I, I, I <coughs> and then rent due, let's see, it should increase by an amount equal to three percent. I should have got my 
for that. I figured it out. <clears throat> I, well, why not? Well, maybe I'm not, everybody maybe I'm not reading this correctly. I don't. Everybody send their comments to me, and then we'll we should have another, forward we'll have another them draft to. With, um, our, and our, yes, our attorney be, should go over. There'll yeah. be another draft. Yeah. But certainly, I want to make sure that our attorney incorporates in that agreement that that the tenant holds us. Holds, holds, indemnify, and dems us from any all claims or damages from the tower. That statement is not even in the contract. Okay, good. Well, I'm sure we'll see another draft of the agreement then in a couple of next months. Yes. Good. Okay, so everybody agrees just to go ahead and all in favor, send it to the attorney to. Yes, agreed. All favor say aye. Aye. Okay. aye. All opposed, same. Uh, new business, <coughs> Carlisle um, Morton and Associates, um, their contract for consulting services. Um, I gave you an email because uh, our attorney looked at it and he wanted a couple changes, um, things added to it. Um, I did speak with um, them this afternoon and Dick Carlisle said no problem he would have no problem adding things that the uh, attorney recommended so at this well, time I, I found their proposal uh, inadequate they didn't they don't have insurance for auto or non owned policies which is standard and I like to make sure that that's included in the uh, in the in the in the in the, in the, in the agreement we, we what we want to require standard insurance policy for consultants and anyone else to provide auto and non-owned auto coverage oh. and um, uh, I don't care if it's added to the agreement but it should be added to the insurance and we should receive an insurance accord form certificate we don't need the policies yeah that's what he is the attorney suggested that the um, oh, and the, well, he, the, the attorney didn't suggest auto non -auto, auto, no he auto. didn't but I made a note of that but he did because um, the policy and he wants the policy like then to be a, a additional name <laughs> yes correct so with that I'll, I'll, I'll recommend that the uh, township approve the uh, <clears throat> agreement with Consarl Portman provided they provide auto non insurance and also provide a certificate or a board <coughs> form noting the insurance that they cover it and that um, the township be listed as an additional name insured <clears throat> okay, so I'll second one and B. Okay, can I roll call, please? Ms. Miller, yes. Mr. Gamko? Yes. Mrs. Blaska? Yes. Mr. Noble? Yes. Ms. Shipesider? Yes. <clears throat> Motion carries. Okay, next on the agenda is the resignation of the constable. Well, there certainly seems to be an issue. It yeah. there certainly does. Yeah. And, uh, um, <coughs> I, I guess uh, I'd suggest that we... Uh, I guess we have no other choice, but from what I hear, to not accept the uh, resignation of the constable. It appears that, according to his family, his spouse, that it was uh, obtained in some manner, and that uh, we put it on the agenda for the next meeting. I'd also suggest that the uh, Mr. Bear's, Bear's family would need to look at the situation and the performance of duties and uh, I want to make sure that, that that if he does retire from his office that he receives all funds that are uh, that are due and is set forth in the township regulations and as I understand there's a there's a there's a specific monthly payment specific specific monthly payment for the rest of his life and there's also uh, the uh, township Procedures, I think, call for 
dental and optical insurance for the rest of his life, mm -hmm. if I'm not correct. So that should be clarified so that his family understands what, if he does retire, that what they get. I don't know whether that, is that correct? Uh, yes, they, the, clerk, treasurer? the retirees receive $575 a month stipend, which they can use towards their um, medical. They also receive dental and optical. The township pays for that. I also gave you filling township board vacancies. It's a statute, and I want to ask Diane why she called the attorney on January 17th, two phone calls discussing constable position with the attorney, review township election statute, and email supervisor resignation. Diane, all you had to do was ask me. I'm the clerk. I run the elections. I have the statutes. Here's copies of it. I also verified with uh, the director of elections that the board, the constable doesn't go on the ballot. It's the only position that doesn't when someone retires or passes right. away. Um, but I did talk to um, the director of elections. The board can vote to do away with the constable mm -hmm. position if the board chooses to do so. And I was aware of that. I checked on that a year and a half ago when he came to me originally talking about resigning. Um, so I'm not exactly sure. Maybe that just was brought up during our conversation with the attorney, but I have something from the MTA stating exactly that. So I was well aware for the last year and a half that we do not have to fill this vacancy. Well, the rest of the board wasn't. So I gave everyone a copy. Okay. This is the statute. And it also goes into, I also gave you the <coughs> job description. Okay. And I want to know why you didn't come to me and ask me. It was that because it was $100 calling you when no, I had this information. On that was something I discussed with MTA a year and a half ago. I don't know exactly what the conversation with the attorney was about. Maybe he brought it up So to me during that discussion. But... Um, I'm well aware of that, that we do not have to replace them. Um, but why didn't so, you just ask me? I don't know. Maybe you weren't in. I'm not sure. But I already knew, so I didn't need to ask you is what I'm saying, I guess. I already knew that a year and a half ago. I got the information from the Michigan Township Association. Well, I'll, if I may, I'll make a motion that we uh, table this issue until uh, the next, next meeting, until we, till we have some uh, more information and that the... Uh, uh, family uh, reviews the situation and sets forth anything they want in writing. And I'll second that because I was not aware of how this letter was received either. So. Well, can I comment? Is, is there an allegation here that the that this is not his signature? I mean, no. I mean the. I don't believe uh, so. I mean, nothing's going to. Nothing's really going to change. I mean, he came to me in October 2015. Uh, and said that he wanted to retire and he wasn't going to run. And he, my understanding is he was bullied into running again. And uh, he can't do his job. I mean, I was, I just became aware of this uh, a couple of days ago. And, um, you know, I don't think anything's going to change on this. This is not how you go about it. You don't kick them when they're down. No, it's not I kicking agree. anyone that's down. It's somebody that we've been well, carrying he him. He has made a mention, I'm sure, to every single one of us at one time. We've been carrying him since 2015. He can't even come in. He can't do his job. We've had other people doing the job. And, no, you know, you we should know have this. I didn't do anything. I, I have not my authority to do this. And um, so... Over and see him twice a week and see how you, how you can say that. I've gone over there twice, seven, eight times. Okay, um, so we have a motion to table it um, from Mr. Noble and Ms. Blasco seconded. Can I have a roll call, please? Mr. Noble? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Mr. Gamka? No. Ms. Blasco? Yes. Ms. Scheibsider? Yes. Motion carries.
the next is the um, hazardous waste amendment that the Planning Commission decided to add language after um, a cell tower was um, approved for a special land use and there was some, some concerns about um, things that would be discussed with the Planning Commission or anybody who would um, be interested in knowing about hazardous waste and what was contaminating the property and um, this is a language they decided to add to um, it would be to adapt, amend and adopt the following language as recommended by the Planning Commissioner for Hazardous Waste Sites as provided. I'll just make a motion for that. Motion is to amend and adopt the following language as recommended by the Planning Commission for Hazardous Waste Sites. I'll second that. All right. Can I have a roll call, please? Mrs. Blaska? Yes. Mr. Noble? Yes. Ms. Miller, yes. Mr. Gamka? Yes. Ms. Scheibsteiner? Yes. I'll take up on the, I'll tell you this. the second, uh, second uh, amendment, ordinance amendment we want to have for the night is regarding uh, additions to the dog kennel, dog kennel ordinance uh, describing setbacks on the property and also for dog nuisance barking. Need a second? I'll second. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, was that a motion? Yes, that was a motion. Oh. Okay, uh, the motion and I, the board approve the uh, setbacks and approve, dog no, no, wait, approve, approve the addition of uh, section 18 to uh, item 18 to section 38582 regarding dog kennels. I made the motion. Who's the second? I did. Any discussions? Yeah, I, I know that we've had, I'd like to make some comments here that we've had residents come in um, over the last couple of years about dog kennels. Is this um, amendment going to address most of these problems that these people have? Or that's, the, we, that's the intention, yes. That's we, the intention. We've had a lot of dialogue on it. All right. Did, yes, we, did we talk to some of these people that were complaining to see that this is yes, going to meet Yes, the, the, the lead gentleman uh, in our township uh, has right. been active on that. He's been present. And also several other uh, dog kennel owners were present. All right, I just I think I think we had good coverage on it. All right, then thank you. Anybody else? else? Roll call. Roll call. Mr. Gamka. Yes. Ms. Blaska. Yes. Mr. Noble. Yes. Ms. Miller. Yes. Ms. Scheibsteiner. Yes. Motion carries. Next one is the. Um, Small winery. Um, I'd like to make a motion to adopt the Rose Township Zoning Ordinance. Small winery as a special land use in agricultural zone districts. Language as presented. I'll second. I would add for the record that to the audience that there was a lot of dialogue on this, a lot of work on it. Uh, and there was a lot of people in attendance. There was one person that wanted to talk about a beer, uh, a beer facility that does not apply to this. This only applies to wine growing on the property. Okay. All right. Anybody have any discussion? Can I have a roll call, please? Ms. Miller, yes. Mr. Gamka? Yes. Ms. Blaska? Yes. Mr. Noble? Yes. Ms. Scheibsteiner? Yes. All right. Motion to adopt carries. Uh, next thing we have um, is the contract for the lawn. This, like the other contract, is something where we're going to um, just everybody put some input into how they want to go about this. It's about the time we need to put out for bids. So I guess it would be let's start with some discussion about what we would like to do. If there's any changes, the, I did send it to the attorney. He approved it. Well, are we going to discuss putting it back into one contract rather than two? We can do that. As last year, because it really didn't seem to make 
much of a difference as far as the bids that came in, and then we mm -hmm. end up had to, you know, do double work to put it out there. That's fine. We could put it back into one if everybody... And as I mentioned a couple months ago in our meeting, I would like to see, since I'm responsible for the cemeteries, they're handled totally different. I would like... I drew up my own contract. Okay. I gave everybody a copy of it tonight. So that could go to the attorney if you approved it. Okay. And remove the cemeteries out of this contract for site grass mowing because last year's contract was strictly clean up on one contract, mowing on another. So this would be two contracts, but strictly cemeteries. Not okay. The clean up is already part of this contract that I drew up. All right. I'm well. I suggest that if you're going to have a separate contract that you fall, you prepare, include all the all the necessary documents in the bid proposal that are in the that are in the present uh, land cleaning contract. I will. Uh, and the agreement form, the agreement form, description of property, insurance requirements, etc. I already have, did. Who, no, 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 no. Let's not have. I've got. Let's, let's not have three or four different types of, of contract language drawings. Face <laughs> contact broad floating around. <clears throat> it's going to confuse all bidders. <clears throat> so I would suggest that you use, uh, let's see what I'm referring to, follow the same format that is in the pre that was in the present land proposed land contract. They have, have the advertise for the bids, adjust the site maintenance landscape mowing section in the documents, <clears throat> provide the notice of reward. Provide the proposal format. I uh, provide that. the provide the professional service agreement <clears throat> that has all the insurance listed. Period. That is not included in what you propose. So let's get some uniformity in the contract in the township. If we're going to be bidding documents and I'll line up uh, the township money, let's make sure we have all the appropriate documents. Sure. The present grass mowing contract ultra bids <coughs> has those necessary documents in it, so prepare them on that basis. I would recommend that we uh, <coughs> approve the uh, advertisement, provide the proposal, uh, publish, publishing request for proposal on the present quote, grass mowing contract as set forth before us. And that get that out for, for notification. Uh, then provide an addendum to that proposal. Addendum to that proposal, removing the cemetery, the cemetery for, and then let the cemetery committee proceed with their own proposal. So you're saying let's do the the grass contract without the cemetery and well and I, I obviously that's what that's what's been proposed at this time the one that's here but, but let's, let's, let's not delay getting out this this mate this maintenance contract okay as an ad because if we have a new proposal this, the, the proposed proposed uh, proposal documents prepared by the cemetery committee is not is, I would not approve that because it's not appropriate to what have all the necessary documents in it Glenn, so it'll be you another month until before they bids. So we can wait until March's meeting because that's it's not going to go out until then. Well, yeah, why don't we do the changes on both the documents yeah. and then we'll approve at the next meeting. Well, that's that's know, what okay, this was about—a discussion. You, so part, part of the problem with this mowing contract, it never got out. It, it, the contract never got the proposal went out, bids were received, township worked on it, the agreement never got authorized till halfway into the season. So. That was one of the problems from last year. No. Yeah, yes, sir, it was. That is not true. <clears throat> well, that's that's my motion. So. Okay, so that's your motion is... So is this going to include combining the, the cleanup, though, and the mowing together rather than doing those? Things? Yes. No. Well, my yes. Yes. All together rather no, no. Because right. that's only done at cemetery, so that's in... Just the cemetery. Created, but right, so that's uh, going to be my motion. Right my motion approves getting what was presented before us for the grass mowing contract out for advertisement with a subsequent addendum following up, deleting the cemetery work from it. If the board wants to have two contracts, okay. then the cemetery committee can proceed with their own documents and get another bid on it. 
Okay. If that, that's what I'm proposing. I, I don't know what, maybe. Why don't we make all the corrections and put it on the March's meeting? All right, then let's see if it's, does anybody want to second Glenn's motion? I don't have any clear motion in that whole discussion. Okay. My motion is to authorize the advertisement and request for proposals dated March 9, 2000, February 26, 2018, be authorized with a subsequent addendum, ADDNDUM, to the contract, to the, to the proposed contract, deleting the cemetery mowing. That will allow, period, discussion, that will allow the grass mowing, the, the grass mowing conquer to get out and get on schedule. The board can act on it. And then the cemetery committee can prepare their proposal and their request advertisement and request for proposal and the subsequent contract documents in accordance with the standard form the township has. That, in, in summary, that means there's two contracts floating around for one item of work. So that's the proposal. I met the, the motion. If you want to combine them back together, they're already combined together, and the cemetery committee doesn't want to do it that way, it appears. No, it's up. no because the cemetery is handled totally different. Well, whatever. But I, that's let's, that's let's get why the same we wanted up. We spoke about it last year. We said we really need a separate contract strictly for cemeteries because it's handled totally different than grass mowing at this office, grass mowing at the park, grass mowing at the ballpark. It's totally different. So that's why I was trying to separate it, and that's why I talked about it in the fall. I said we really need a separate. I'm sorry. I'll second. Okay, so <clears throat> the thing with this would be we would it, we would be putting out two different um, announcements in the paper for, for bids at two different times. Which is going to be very and, confusing. Well, and we can we can put them together and save money as well, correct? I can put two bids on one. On one. Legal. So that's just one thing. Um, I guess this one is ready to roll. Um, but it's well, my understanding you want to put the proposal out for the total package and then later remove the cemetery. Is that my that's, that's the most Well, that's kind of po pointless. So well, you want to you want to have the contractors bid well, the whole well, thing well, and then remove no, the I'm just trying no, to understand. No. You know, and he's got a due date on here, March 9th. There's no way this is going to go to the newspaper and well, we're going to get bids. Uh, and open by March 9th at 3 p.m. Those dates aren't, none of, none of, none of the dates on there are, I mean, that was all for discussion. I told him next time let's just put X's in there for that purpose. He just threw a date in. It doesn't mean anything. It's, it's up to us to decide what we want to do here. Well, I will say from a bidding, bidding process, uh, you're going to get significantly higher prices for both. Because the major thing in the industry and in mobilization of equipment is mobilization of equipment and people. So you're going to have two different contractors mobilizing, one to do one work, one to do the other. We had two contracts last year. You had two contracts last year? Yes, sir. Yeah, one was cleanup and then one was mowing. Yeah, we did yeah, this well, last what's year. The what's Except the, what, the cemetery is not grass mowing then? Cemetery is grass mowing. It's Clean up. Well, well, okay, it's trimming fine. trees. It's trimming bushes. It's totally different than just going and mowing here. The, what we That's separated fine. last year was the clean up. The clean up part. Yeah, yeah, we just broke part. off the clean up. Of yeah. The cemetery. Otherwise, okay. the mowing was well, all okay. one. Whatever, contract. whatever you wish to do. It's just totally different, Glenn. And I'm in charge of the cemetery. Then fine, fine. So that's why I was trying to make life easier. And if we got two bidders, two different companies, so be it. But a lot of the stuff that um, was supposed to get done last year didn't get done. So well, I'll tell you what. You know, you got to understand when you when on a bidding process for contractors, 
No, okay. I'm talking about up, up to, wait, let me we pay somebody let me make this to statement. do this in the office, and it didn't get when done. You have, when, you, when, you, when you bid work and you want people to perform work, the document should clearly show what is required. Okay. So let's get the documents right the way you want them. Okay. That's what I was trying to do. I'll be, I'm, I'm surprised. Last year the document wasn't clear enough to what had to be done. So you want to have you want to have two separate no, bids, that have two separate my, bids. That wasn't it, Glenn. That's right. We paid Dave Plews twenty five hundred dollars a year to go pick up the sticks, trim the bushes, trim the trees, and it didn't get done. So I want it done by a contractor. So fine. Okay. I have motion on the, I have motion on the floor. And okay, so <laughs> she second. My only thing is, um, since we're still in discussion, sorry. Um, if we were to put it in the paper I, and bid this out, I would just want to remove the cemetery part of it and not amend it later. Exactly, that's what I'm thinking. That's the no problem. I mean, no problem. otherwise, I mean, if, you ask a I mean, if you want to add that to your motion, that's fine, or okay. we can vote and go from no. there, but um, is that okay to uh, remove the cemetery portion of Well, if that's what the board wishes to do, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, is yeah, that okay for your let, motion? Let's, let's get this published, I'll publish in the paper. <laughs> but remove the cemetery portion before it goes I, to bid. Fine, yes. That's okay. Is I that approve. Maybe? I approve this. It's the cemetery removed it. Okay. We're not gonna, we typically but, but, don't but do I want to see. I want to make sure anyways. that I want to make sure that any other, any other proposals for contract work, for the township, be have the same documents that we have in this in this in this uh, proposal. And I'll here. do that because Boiler, I did boilerplate. Boilerplate. Change change the description of the work. Whatever way you want. Okay. Good. So my understanding is that you just want. And I agree with you. Is we want we're going to have two contracts. They're going to be the same contract, is what your point is, right? I want Except to, that one is going to be just for the cemetery, and one is going right. to be the other exactly. one. One's going to have a further expanded description of what they exactly. want done at the cemetery, and one's going to stand alone for the maintenance of our, of our other properties. Right. Okay. All right. We have a roll call. So is that what the motion? This motion. So is what's the motion? Regarding? Repeat the motion. You. We're not going to do. The, 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 the we're the not going to do an addendum. We're just going to remove the, the, the motion is to the is cemetery. To, the motion is to allow the advertisement and, and accompanying documents to proceed with the removal of the cemetery items. Okay. And that means the proposal advertisements change, the agreements change, and the proposal form is changed. But let's proceed with that. So we have Mr. Noble and myself second. Ms. Blasco? Yes. Mr. Noble? Yes. Ms. Miller, yes. Mr. Gamko? Yes. Ms. Scheibsteiner? Yes. And then, so what, just so I can clarify this, then you're going to have a contract with all the cemetery stuff in, by March. Yes. Well, she's going to have something else for the next board meeting. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. We're not. All right. I just want to. That's yep. what I thought it was. I just right. want to clarify that. Okay. Okay. Uh, the last thing on the agenda is the tri-party agreement, which we um, have gave you the email that I sent to. I sent a letter to um, Andrew at the road commission. He's an engineer there. Um, they were going over the uh, GI meeting, which is a great inspection um, because they're going to be doing several re roads of resurfacing in the township. Um, the one is the Milford Road. Um, so they asked if we, if I felt there was any drainage issues, and I brought up how Mason Street pretty much erodes into Milford Road. Not only does it you know, is it wet there? I mean, it's wet there right now always, but there's gravel that goes hundreds of feet down Milford Road. Um, this is a high traffic road because we have the recycling here. Um, so I let them know that I was concerned about that, and they immediately got back with me, and they suggested we do um, use our tri-party money to um, improve uh, Mason Street. So... 
this is an aerial, and Glenn, I told them that you would be questioning this, so this is just an aerial where they just did a, sure. a, a, a quick outline on it. They kind of did some measuring. After I saw what this was, I went out and measured myself. Um, really to get to where the hill crowns and kind of starts to flatten off, um, I guess, the crust of it. Um, it's pretty, you're pretty much right at the uh, entrance to the um, old hall. So they have two different options here. The, the um, option two goes to Franklin Street, which um, I measured, and um, that's like 280 feet, and this would be with lots of curbs and extra drainage added. Um, they also, on top of that, wanted engineering fees and I and survey fees, and that was another, like, I believe $30,000. I talked them into providing that to us. So approximately it would be these two prices. I, I don't believe option one is enough because, like I said, they only have it going 150 feet you have to at least go 200 feet to get to the point where the, the hill crest stops. Um, I had some calls from neighbors on the street as well about how the road arose badly as well. You can go down and you can find the drains that are going into Milford Road. It drains into that um, field across Milford Road where there's some wetlands, but um, it won't do that because you have to actually dig to find the drains because they're full of gravel and then it clogs up with gravel. It's probably the n number one road that I'm always asking for them to come and, you know, regrade as well. So we have the $62,000 tri-party money. They said that they would be able to um, go ahead and use two years worth. So this would be the project for the next two years, but we could do it now. Also, they said, um, they, beyond that, we don't, we don't really need any gravel because we've done a really good job of graveling, so that wouldn't be a, a, a project that we would be doing, and they won't be doing any approaches this year either because they're doing the 20 miles of repave and their maintenance is going to be very busy um, because of that. Uh, so, this is a project I wanted to present to the board. Of course, their engineers will do the survey and the drawings and, uh, and everything. Need um, I have I am going to meet with some engineers and talk about the drainage issues a little bit more. I'm, I'm not so sure we need um, everything that they have on here. It might be too fancy for. And there's so many driveways along the way there. Well, if you look. All right. Good. So, anyways, I just was wondering if the board is interested in working with Mason Street and the, the highest amount I think we would have to approve would be the two years of the um, tri-party agreement, which uh, well, in the years. past we have been using tri-party money to gravel the roads. Is that correct? That yes. It was generally $60,000. Yes. Okay. So in the past, we've been regraveling all the roads in the township. And I, I guess it's been done enough, right? I think that all, I the, roads so are, too. all the roads are being mm -hmm. covered. What did Gordon, what was Gordon's opinion? I mean, oh, yeah. Gordon was, and Rich are very form. excited about this, actually. But do they feel that, is there any roads that they, I always ask them, that needed gravel? I thought we had pretty much done them. I asked them the same thing, and they said um, that, you know, we've done really well, and they don't th think we need to worry about it right now, that this would be, you know, an excellent project because of, well, if Milford Road gets repaved, which it will be in the summer, this will help it not, you know, to last longer, too, and that was the whole thing. Well, like I said, there's water sitting on it right now, and it's really broken up there, too. If you notice how broken it up, it's because of, and plus I'm, plus, when I wrote them, I was actually hoping they threw it into the project, but I'm <laughs> I was dreaming. But, um, I mean, it's, it's definitely a safety issue, I think, too, that gravel and the water sitting there. 
And, and if you go and stand on Milford Road at Mason Street and you look down, it probably goes a good 400 feet, the gravel, from Mason Street. So, so that would be $124,000? I don't believe it would two be. Two years worth of? Two years worth. No, no, no. no. But not necessarily. I don't think it will no, be that It would be 103000 no, uh -huh. I'm saying if this party is $62,228, and you're going to use two years of that. Uh, we would not necessarily have to use all of it, but that would be... That, that shows that there's double but funds available. To repave this road right here is $103,000. Right, and that's after they take off the survey fees and um, the engineering fees. Yeah, they, they must have made the project. They, they, they put a lot of the things on that they, would, they were actually going to... Um, be on site to, um, you know, make sure that it's being done right and um, that type of thing as well. They've estimated the project to be ninety thousand dollars, and they put a fifteen percent contingency <coughs> fee on top of it. So if we're going to do anything, you've got to budget one hundred three thousand dollars. That's what I was thinking about one hundred three. Yeah, I, mean, I was thinking one hundred ten as a max because I always know you say the ten percent, but they did add the fifteen. The so last, the last good. couple of years, we've uh, we've improved uh, intersections at Munger Road and Ratley Lake, Ratley Lake, Ratley Lake, Lake Eagle. Road and Eagle Lake before Eagle Road, Eagle Davis Road, Road, Road before, before the that. other ones. Yeah. It was going to be the uh, Demode Road off of uh, Tiptic over on Hickory Ridge Road because it's a feeder off of Tiptic Lake. Yeah. Um, well, she, uh, Diane's I, saying that they can't do that. that they were not going to do it anyhow they because would, they're going to be too busy. I think they're okay, going to do. Okay, well, I, I don't, don't want to have that drop in the system. But, no, no, that, no. I, I agree. They're going to be busy because that's another critical area that we yeah. need to approach. I agree, on. and that's one thing I actually they, they told me that like a couple of months ago that they wouldn't be doing approaches, and I wasn't sure what we would do until I started thinking about the drainage issue here. Um, and since the repave's coming through. Yeah, well, it's, it's not about it. It's a, it's a travel, travel way mm -hmm. that's a residential street that's got a lot of traffic on it just due to the township hall existing here. So yeah, the recycling township is, alone. Responsible, is responsible for that significant wear and tear in that road. I agree. Normally, other situations, you would, you would put a special assessment district and approach the property owners as they participate on the front footage. But right. this is not that significant a project, and if that ever comes up, I would suggest that the township should, in fact, absorb all the cost of that improvement of that road, because we are the major users of it. I agree. The question on this is that are they going to have to put in ditches on either side of that, because on the one side of the road, those houses don't have very much no. space. I mean, like you look at Bob Woods, and then right on the corner, down from there, that house, and mm -hmm. they, I mean, if they have to put ditches in, they're going to take part of their... Um, no, they're their, not, their, the road's too steep to put ditches. They've, they've included uh, 200, uh, 625 lineal feet of curb and gutter. All right, just wanted to so, ask. Yeah, yeah, I, just, I that's thought it was included in it. Yeah, they, this, they, they, they know what they're doing. They this do was described to me as the Cadillac, no, so, no, well, and, and the drainage did, would be addressed. This is not going to work on that the slope. The curb. They'll, they'll right. Road out. So they got to have, you got to have curb and gutter. Curb and gutter and catch the catch. Yep. All right, well, I'm glad we have an engineer on our board. <laughs> no, I, no, I, it's I, right there. It's I right know, there. Right there. I know. I, know. I, I spent a long time on the phone with them because I said I have an engineer on my board and I need to know what I'm talking about, so I actually had a long conference call with them today as well. All right, I just thought I would ask. In his letter, though, he just says paving it a short distance more than it is would prevent the gravel. So do we really need to do the full distance? This this is my letter to oh, them. This is, your, oh, this okay. is my letter bringing up you know what I would like them to oh, consider. Oh, I took it backwards because it said I'm hoping you can share my comments. Oh, you were saying to him. Yes, because oh, they right. had this GI meeting and I was going to a some some cog meeting and I wanted to be there. So instead that night I wrote this and said please share the okay. comments with um, when you do the discussion because M dot was there and um, and so they are recommending to do the further. Yes, and, and then after I got the prices and I looked at it and I thought, well, we'll see what the board thinks. So. Well, they're, they're, to help you out, there's two options on their letter. Option, come back just 150 feet. Mm -hmm. That's like only going up the hill. and It's not even up the hill all the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Wow. So they, 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 the, the option two is all the way, all the way up to the other street. So. Well, I was trying to figure out how far 150 feet is. I think there's, that's, what, that's Milford Road right there. Yeah, it is. I think that's what that little marker is. Or that's what I was saying. Uh, no, not even quite. No. He couldn't tell. This is Franklin right here. Right. So it's coming from Milford Road up to Franklin. So right here. Right, right up to the top. Like if you go and you 
cut right through the township mm-hmm. hall, that's 200 feet. So, so it's about that. And One then if right you there. go and you see the first, um, I think it's a speed limit sign, that's 100 feet. So 150 is probably like it's, it's like probably right in there. I'm thinking if you divide that and oh well, maybe not even there, probably less. But then probably. Diane, if we did this, then we wouldn't have any gravel for next year. So we wouldn't be able to gravel this year. We wouldn't be able to gravel next year until three years. <coughs> right. Right, unless we came up with money in the budget. I mean, this year we we did two approaches and gravel, so, you know, it all yeah. depends well, this could on what else we're doing. Well, this could potentially leave or 30000 for next year to so take the full amount. That's true, too. Well, we could. We've always appropriated about sixty, seventy thousand in one year, even ninety-nine thousand mm-hmm. of the money that we put in, in addition to Tri County. So this is just, <coughs> I mean, depending on how the money is. So I don't. Right. For incidental. Yeah. You know, just in case. Yeah. yeah so. mm-hmm. I don't want to get behind on the graveling because we don't want to. That's the only thing that. Well, they, I'll, make, I'll, I'll, make, I'll make the motion that we uh, approve uh, the supervisor to uh, enter into an agreement with the road commission for uh, op work as described in option number two of their email January 31, 2018. For Mason State. In the amount of $103,000. 103,494, 495. I'll second. Can I add something to that? By all means. Um, for the um, paving of Mason Street. Do you mind? Do what? Can I add for pa- the paving of Mason Street? Just. Yeah, what, what, what is the street? Mason Street, right here. I just yeah, paving Mason Street, yeah. Well, okay, I just yeah. wanted to actually put that into the language that we're paving Mason Street. Option two, in the amount of $103,494.25. Wow. <clears throat> he rounded up. But rounded off. <laughs> 103, 495 in his motion. Whatever. Motion was Glenn, second by Diane. Any more discussion? Mr. Gamka? Uh, yes. Ms. Blaska? Yes. Mr. Noble? Yes. Ms. Miller? No. Ms. Scheib Snyder? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, uh, next we have announcements. Uh, the Planning Commission meeting, the next one is March 1st at 7 p.m. The Zoning Board of Appeals meeting is March 6th at 7 p.m. The North Oakland County Fire Authority, Authority Board meeting is tomorrow at 3 o'clock here at the Rose Township offices. Um, the assessing office is the second Tuesday of every month from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. The next township regular board meeting is March 14th at 7 p.m. And miscellaneous reports, we have the NACFA report. Paul, do you have anything for NACFA? I'm just trying to think. Um, we didn't meet. We didn't meet in January, so it's way back in December. Was at the meeting where we went ahead and um, we were discussing the wages and yes. things. And um, I think I discussed that in, in our January meeting. So, there, no, I don't have anything in NACFA because there was no meeting in January. Okay. Uh, Planning Commission, Paul? I mean, I'm sorry, Glenn? Yeah, the Planning Commission, the next meeting uh, is in March. Uh, we are supposed to be receiving uh, comments from. Uh, the outside reviewing agencies for incorporation into the uh, Planning Commission document. Um, and at that time, we'll be reviewing that to see what additions, additions or corrections we may to make, need to make to the draft document. I would like to point out to the Township attendees that, that the, 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 a copy of the Planning Commission draft, master plan draft documents 
are available, and Mr. Flues has it. So uh, the there's website. been no basic they're changes. On the website. Pardon? They're on the website. And they're also on the website. Uh, there's no basic changes to it. It's just been reorganized in a more readable manner, and other pertinent references have been put in to make it more viable. But there's been no basic change to the mapping or such. So that's the next planning commission meeting, March 1. Uh, it says people are invited to attend. There will be discussion on changes and corrections to the draft document. Going up. Okay, thank you. Um, call your youth assistants, Teresa. We do not have a whole lot going on with Taya right now, um, but we are going to be participating this Friday the 16th. There is a fundraising wrestling event at Carl Richter. It's um, put on by the Holly Veterans Resource Center. We will be selling popcorn there as a fundraiser for Haya. There's, it's also going to benefit um, Holly Youth Coalition and a couple other local groups. So if you're interested in a it's pure pro wrestling, it's $10 a person for adults, $5 for kids. Um, but it's all a fundraiser for local um, groups. So. Oh, nice. OK, um, cemetery committee? Uh, we're going to be meeting in the next two weeks. I don't have the Okay. Park and Rec. Um, the engineers are ready to start staking. Uh, Glenn and I will be meeting with them tomorrow. I've gotten prices on the stakes. Um, the cheapest I could find was tractor supply. So I'll be going there to purchase them next week sometime. Um, Working on park plan. Some clog has offered to meet with us, um, the park committee, uh, once we get the draft ready, which will be very soon, and um, see if they have anything they think we should add. Um, so we're going to get their input. We'll be meeting with them. Uh, you have anything, Glenn? No, nothing. No. Okay. Okay. We want to get this moving. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So we can get more money in the budget for next year to do, accomplish some things. <clears throat> Uh, Heritage Committee, we had uh, Exploring the Past Around You uh, Wednesday. It was very well attended. It was well received. People were excited afterwards. We had, I don't know, I think it seemed like an hour after of discussion with different people and meeting people and talking about what they knew about the township. So it was, people were very excited. They asked us about um, when our next meeting were was going to be, um, we had some discussion about maybe doing an event where people come and they talk about their own home after they research it. Um, and we attended the um, Oakland County Bicentennial um, planning, um, hoping to make Rose Township part of Oakland County's Bicentennial, which is in 2020. Uh, we met with a bunch of people that uh, are working on that, and we're hopeful to maybe make an event here that could, you know, be part of the Oakland County Bicentennial. Um, and that's really it for Heritage. We're, it's a fun group. We're having a good time with it. Um, yeah. So supervisor report, um, and I'd like to announce that the Board of Review will be meeting by appointment, uh, you can make an appointment with our assessor. Uh, begin the meetings will begin on Thursday, March eighth, from nine a.m. to twelve p.m. and from one p.m. to four p.m. Monday, March twelfth, from one p.m. to four p.m. six p.m. to nine p.m. Wednesday, March fourteenth, um, from nine a.m. to noon, and one p.m. to four p.m. Also, the Road Commission wanted me to uh, share this with you, Michigan Vehicle Code 257.677. It prohibits pushing snow from a driveway or, par or parking lot into the road. Doing so is a misdemeanor, punishable, punishable by a fine of up to $100 and or 90 days in jail. I will give this to the 
clerk and if you want to have that one one of our sites. I thought I thought she already put it on. Did I so did I give her a note? I might have given no, it. I gave it to her. That's okay. Bullshit, it? <laughs> I remember writing somebody a note. Um, all these extensions. That's where we meet with some tag. At the post. Good. Guess that's it for I mean, me. We want to know what's All right. So, well, brief public comments on anything you want to talk about. Okay. The tiles? Oh, yeah. Look pretty bad. And they do have a tendency to fall after they get Good point. Well noted. Thank you. Tiles. Give you my name the last time. But on the cemetery, I hate to say it, but it's time that this board steps up to the plate and do the damn job right. You're paying two different people for the same job. Dave Blues is supposed to be doing the main that's cleaning up, putting, picking stuff up and stuff, and then you're paying somebody else to do his job. I think it's time you separate these two or get rid of it. If you're going to pay somebody sitting in the audience seven, eight, nine hundred dollars, and you're paying him twenty five hundred. Why? I've been around here too long, and I know the cemetery, in and out. And this $37,000, is that into funds where you can't touch it? And people buy a lot, 15% of that goes into perpetual care. And that's where it stays. And that's where all this buildup that was put into a non-secured fund. And I believe last year there was 39,000 in there almost. I think I got the documents at home. But I haven't been to a meeting in three years because you guys turn your backs on what I was trying to straighten out. And I not, might not be around here too much longer. And I got a lot of information from old people, the ones that's passed away. Just like BB Cemetery. If people looked the genealogy up, they would find out what the situation was. After the meeting, sure. Anybody else in public comment? No? Okay. I'll move to adjourn. Maybe a second? I'll second. Dave, you have a team, Susan? This is what I was going to learn. Something wrong in our maintenance room? I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, I'll be here. Have, have a good night. Here, and then it says, tell Lisa Thanks, Paul. Additional friend. Thanks. So we'll see you later. Have a good night. That's the additional. Yeah, I did see that, but she was, yeah, and then I read through this thing and but Debbie was questioning this, and I know I figured it out, and that, but there's also this. I'm looking at all the different dollar amounts, you know, and I'm looking at, I know what we've got. And I was looking to find this. Glenn, I said, look at the dollar amounts. Huh? I wanted you to look at the dollar oh, I amount. Okay. I, 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 I,